Hi, it's Char. I'm here with another installation of Birth of Maya Moe. Today we're going to do step two and take a photo and upload, of course. Um, this is uh, the completed installation of the neck block. So this was step one. Now we're ready for step two. I have already removed the clamps and the call from the neck block and now I'm going to mark my sides and trim these up and install the tail block. So. This is sort of my mise en place of uh, uh, what I need to do for step two. So I've got uh, the mold that I'm gonna use. I've got the sides, of course. I've got a portoford cedar tail block because this is gonna have a portoford cedar neck. I've got some clamps. I have a call which matches the radius at the tail of the instrument. I always just check it against the radius of the tail block just to make sure that that was created properly, and it was. And then I've got a little piece of wax paper, I've got some glue, I've got some turnbuckles for in there, and we'll go ahead and get this started. So one thing I do is I write- Can you just say something about that neck? Can you grab that tail block for a minute? Yes, sure. With the radius? Mm -hmm. Ben didn't show how he makes those, but they're cut square and sanded on the disc sander, and he's got a very cool kind of combination vacuum chuck that holds it uh, against you know this the square, the edge, square edge and it rotates so the correct radius and he just does exactly like that yeah and it, it uh, sands the radius right on the block Very okay cool. all right so the first thing I do is on the sides on the edge that will receive the top I make a mark so that I always keep the can keep the orientation because you don't want to get this flipped upside down and then I write the serial number on the block just to make sure we keep everything in order. Um, so I'm going to remove these little clamps here. And so I'll put this into the mold. Line up. I'll line up the joint here at the neck block with the center line of my mold. And then I'll use some combination of these turnbuckles to get this. Uh... These turnbuckles, um, we made the first versions of them and then Ben, of course, made a better version, but it's all kind of store-bought hardware. And there to spread that, you can see the, the blocks are radiused to go right against the sides. And then the turnbuckle, Char is turning in the middle and it's just used to press those sides up against the side of the mold. Also, we talk a lot about center lines. Having accurate center lines is extremely important. Anything that you can think of, you know, when you're making templates, put a center line on it and reference to that line. These molds all have them and you'll see them at various other places. Here's the center so, line down here. Right, and I'm marking, I'm marking and I'm gonna trim off to that mark on either side, and then I'm gonna glue in my tail block. I'm gonna be as precise as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect and spectacular because I'm gonna put an end graft over that, that joint, so. Um, then I have a square. And this edge is the top edge, the, the, where the top is going to get um, attached. So I can use a square along that edge because it's been squared up. So I mark both sides. On the mark I just made. And then I'm going to go to the disc sander to put some earplugs in because this is loud. And I will put my glasses on too. Not only can I, will I be able to see. <laughs> uh, before you turn it on, just show you out. And this you got to be really careful of. We thought and thought and thought how we could. You can't get this into the bandsaw, and so how can you, you know, cut that back? And we do it on the disc sander, and here I'm going to go around. You can see the top of the instrument, 
and then the back of it is over here. So we've spread that out a bit and you just want to do that carefully and not, you know, just force it around. And keep your material flat onto the table. that edge up a little bit and then I'm gonna the uh, I'm gonna blow that off over here. and I'm just gonna show our cyclone. there's our dust collector in the corner and that's what the big noise you hear come on with our machinery all of our pipes are in the floor and they pop out over there you can maybe see the galvanized pipe and it sucks the sawdust down into that barrel so you can see how this actually turned out really great. And the reason that happens is because we have, uh, I bent those sides together, they're indexed at the same point for the waist, and then we trimmed off an equal amount. So, and, and they're, they're book matched. It comes so. out great. You're talking I'm about talking the book match. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the lines meeting. So, good. pretty fantastic there. Like and can that. you just, you talk often about how flat the top is, yes. and that you use that as a reference point for your square. Right. So I'd like you just for the camera to put your square on the top against that that you just sanded and mm -hmm. show that it's square and then put it against the bottom and see what would have happened had you used the other edge. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I'm like, what are you wanting me to do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, so using the... I can't... Can you get in there? Yeah, I'll be able to. Oh, okay. So using the top edge, you can see... So that's what she marked. And now and flip that's it what over. I sanded. But if I had used this edge, if you remember, is has a profile to accommodate the the dome on the back, so you can see how that would have been wrong. So you've got to always think about what square and what isn't, and which and edge is the top, the and, appropriate side. And I, you know, when I had bent the sides, I had remember I had marked which side with arrows. I'd marked which side was the top. So. Every step I double check to be sure, like this is the, I put the number, I put another arrow to be sure that this is the side the top is going to get attached to. Otherwise, when, when I go to sand on the, uh, on, to make these edges true so that they can receive the top and back, then I could compromise this back dome. I could also compromise the flatness of the top. So we're just always mindful of which edges going to receive the top. And that goes down on the table because the table's flat and that edge is flat. So we're not going to get any kind of off rocking. The other thing I need to do here before I clamp in is I want to protect the mold, but also I don't want to end up gluing the sides to the mold, so I just use a piece of wax paper between the mold and the and the sides so that the glue has a place to go. Right there, she's just getting it on center line. Really important that that's indexed properly, that the neck block is indexed on the center line. Otherwise, when you glue in the tail block, something's going to be wonky. I'm going to put a clamp right here just so that doesn't move away when I when I do my turn bubbles in. So you can see, just clicked in right there. So I've got a good 
and it is you know, lined up with the center line there. Okay, so at this point we're going to go from this video and we'll do another one uh, in just a second for us, a day later for you, that's going to show the actual uh, gluing in of the end block.